Falcons fans, welcome in. It is episode 25 of Out of Your Falcon Mind, Atlanta Falcons fan cast. My name is John. I'm your host, as always, joined by my co-host, Mike Cottrell. What's going on, buddy? What's going on? We got a very special episode. Very, 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 very special episode of Out of Your Falcon Mind. I'm out of my Falcon Mind. John is out of his Falcon Mind. And today we got a third person out of his Falcon Mind. John, introduce him. That's right. Yeah, we are very happy uh, and honored to have uh, David Walker, DW, from the Falcoholic on the show today. David, welcome, man. Thanks for joining us. Yes, good to be here. Yeah, appreciate it, man. Yeah, it's uh, we figured we would uh, talk about the 2021 season as a whole. I mean, kind of break it down, uh, not super in-depth, but just kind of look at it from start to finish and kind of look at where we're going as a team. And, uh, you know, there's not a shortage of things to talk about from this year. That's for sure. No, there's a lot. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, First off, uh, for any new listeners to us, hey, welcome in. Hope you guys stay around and and, uh, listen. Go back and listen to our very first episode, which we recorded in October. Uh, Just entry if you want to learn more about who we are. And we're just two lifetime Falcons fans uh, since about 90, what, Mike, 91 ish? About 91 when Deion Sanders, Andre Risen, Jesse Tuggle, all the rest of them was there. That was a good year. That was a good, good year. year. Sure was. Good year. Um, so hold so, on, hold on, hold on, John. I got to yeah. stop you. Just interrupt. Uh, David, you started being a Falcon fan when? 1980. 1980. David is a got true Falcon fan, buddy. Got him the props. I love it. The old, the old NFC West days. Who sure was, was the quarterback of like the Falcons when you started liking him? Do you remember? Oh, yeah, Steve Burkowski. Yeah. Damn. Man, I Those had that days. football card. I never knew who that was. I had the football card. Yeah. <laughs> I, he I he had a dope. rocket for an arm, man. He could sling it. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Um, yeah. We started, actually, Mike is from DC. Yeah. And Deion Sanders is how he became a fan. Yeah. He didn't he didn't man. want to be a Redskins fan. So it's just like he saw Deion. <laughs> man, I didn't even like the sport of football, David. I saw Deion Sanders and it was over for that. <laughs> Prime time. Prime yeah. time. You got it. He was so much fun to watch, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everywhere he went. Yeah. Yep. Uh tell me you got to see him live in person, David. I it, did. You ever see a, a Deion times. game? Yeah. You saw Deion um, play? Yeah, saw him live. Saw him in the uh, play for the Braves, saw him play for the Falcons, and I actually saw him play for the Cowboys. So, oh, the Dion three peat. Oh, yeah. which one was the best experience? You think? Uh, well, I think the I think the Braves game I went to. I think he actually hit a home run. Um, so you know that was oh, that's crazy. That was pretty cool. Yeah, damn, that's crazy. And that was in the days when he would uh, take a helicopter. Uh, he had that yeah. stunt where he took a helicopter from uh, you know I think it was from the Braves game to the Falcons game and. Or vice versa, it was one or the other. But um, yeah, played played both games in the same day. Um, absolute. To this day, I think he was probably still one of the most electric athletes the Falcons have ever had. Man, oh, I'm, I'm on board with you. I'm on board. Yeah, yeah I mean, and there's I've seen a lot of guys, a lot of baseball guys say if he would have chose baseball, likely would have been a Hall of Famer. Yeah, yeah. Say, yep. which is insane. Think about it. I mean, oh yeah, yeah. But uh, Man, I'm about to pick David's brain. I got a thousand, <laughs> I got a thousand questions because I didn't know I got a thousand questions. Well, go ahead, John. I got. Oh, you're good. It. No, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just saying. Yeah, with our podcast, I mean, uh, like I said, for any first-time listeners, we are definitely centered around the Falcons, but we get into a lot of Atlanta sports. We just end up sometimes about Netflix, movies, drinks, food, you know, whatever. I mean, it's kind of it all comes up invariably in our podcast. So. <clears throat> Um, we do recap and we do preview the shows every week or the, the games every week. Uh, we started it, like I said, about what? Might and Dolphins was our first preview game. It was uh, week five show. or six. I believe yeah. it was the Dolphins. Yeah. yeah. So um, just, you know, we, we wanted to start it last spring, but we we just couldn't. I mean, our, our schedules were nuts. So we got to start it about four or five weeks in. But, hey, we've had, we're having a blast, having a good time. So, yeah. 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 But we're going to say, Mike. No, nah, I'm saying uh, we what started off as fun. We just having a blast, man. Just every yeah. day, and uh, and this will be a good one with David on the show. I That's can right. Feel it off. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you I hope so. Yeah, yeah. You, you guys can follow us um, at out of your f and mind, just out of your and then f and mind on Twitter, and out of your Falcon mind on Instagram. Uh, you can email us at atlfalconfancast at gmail.com, like some of you already have this year. We do appreciate that. 
And uh, Mike, give yep. them David's Twitter. If y'all ever want to laugh about some Falcon shit, you got to give him his Twitter. So, David, please. Hey, what do you go ahead, man? Is it, is it DW Falcoholic? You know what it is? Uh, Falcoholic DW. Yeah, Falcoholic DW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all got to yeah. check it out. That's right. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I told David before we came, we came on the show, I mean, we definitely, if you guys are not aware of the Falcoholic, you need to be if you're a Falcons fan because it's they cover the team inside and out. They understand what it's like to be a Falcons fan uh, through and through. I mean, just not just on the surface of watching games and being a fan, but really, I mean, we're a special type of group. Um, so <laughs> this, yeah. and it, come, oh, it yeah. comes through. Yeah, it comes through on the tweets. So, man, we appreciate everything that Falcoholic does. And, uh, <laughs> I that, appreciate that. Yeah, man. Yeah, for sure. So, man, David, getting into it, man, right into it. Um, when the Falcons first hired Arthur Smith and Terry Fontenot, what, what was your first impression? Um, I was excited. You know, uh, we obviously keep track of all the coaching candidates. Um, and we sort of before before we even uh, when we knew that Dan Quinn was done, you know, middle of the season, we immediately started tracking guys we thought were going to be head coaching candidates. Arthur Smith was one of the names. Uh, obviously, you know, guys like Eric Bieniemy um, were on the list. We really loved the idea of him coming in. Um, but the more I started looking at Arthur Smith, I started watching Titans games, um, and I started watching the Titans Titans games going back 2019, 2020, when he was the offense coordinator. And uh, I loved what I saw. Uh, you know, and it wasn't. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, well, it was." just Derrick Henry and, and certainly having Derrick Henry makes a big difference. Yeah. Sure. Um, but what you saw in the passing game was um, he, the, the concepts he used, especially in the red zone. Uh, I saw game after game after game where uh, Ryan Tannehill had like three options open um, <laughs> three good options. And I was like, this is the anti Dirk cutter. Right. Um, the and yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I think people are uh, forgetting that he came in with a really strong resume, despite what happened this season. And, you know, we could talk about that, but yeah. his resume coming in was phenomenal. You know, one of the top five offenses year after year, you know, top three in red zone scoring on uh, his two years as offensive coordinator. Um, and, and it wasn't a fluke. Uh, you look at the plays, the way he ran the offense, uh, you would see consistently uh, games where he had safeties confused. At, at, at the snap, those safeties didn't know who they were supposed to be covering. Mm -hmm. um, and that is fun to watch. And it reminded me a lot of what Shanahan did. Not the same plays, not the exact same concepts, but Shanahan loved to get that defense on their heels where they, they didn't know what was coming. Um, variety. Yeah. And, yeah. and Smith was the same way. And look, you know, some people – I've had people tell me he needs to be fired after one year, and I'm like, you guys are out of your mind, man. Yeah, we've heard the same uh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's uh, you got to give coaches more time than that, especially for a roster and you know cap situation like they had. But mm -hmm. uh, you, you know you can't scheme around bad offensive line play. You know you, there's only so oh. much you can do. Um, but I think there there were plays this year um, that should give fa fans hope that um, when the pieces come together, uh, I, I think this is going to be a big dynamic offense again. So. Uh, I love the hire. I was glad they brought in offensive-minded coach. Uh, I was tired of going with defensive-minded guys. Yeah, uh, you know this. This is a league that's driven by offense now. Period. Yep. Um, David, there's no such thing as a shutdown defense anymore. Sure isn't. So I, so I got a question for you, David. Are we just going to jump into this, John? David, do you see it being a dynamic offense with Matty Ice? Um, the truth. I, I think there, it, that's going to be a co good question. Like next year, um, 2022, I think it's going to be better. Uh, okay. I, I don't think it's going to be, I think they'll be in the top half of the league in offense. Okay. Because um, I don't think they're that far away. Now, a lot of that is going to depend on Calvin Ridley and what happens with him. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they're going to be like a top five offense next year. Okay. I just, I, I don't think they're quite there yet. And then you get into 2023. Um, and I don't know if Ryan is here in 2023. So it's, it's really open-ended. Now, do I think Ryan can run a dynamic offense? Okay. Yes. Um, as long as his arm doesn't fall off. Like he's, he's going to be 37. Oh. He's, he's going to be 38 next year. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Uh, no, do you, do, do you honestly, you saw him play this year, right? Did you, was his struggles more from the offensive line? And him getting beat up, or do you see his arm declining? 
I had some initial concerns about the arm. Um, okay. I saw some throws that, um, and we saw several, you know, throughout the year, like, yeah, and, and you, you're not going to find a bigger Matt Ryan fan than, than me. Um, I don't know. But I don't know. Those, <laughs> th- those throws alarmed me. Um, yeah, hey, that, hey, I love you, David. The same way. And I love Matt Ryan. That's my favorite. Yeah. yeah. But I, 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 I saw some of those throws. And I was like, whoa. Like, yeah. it, same it, it just underthrown. Um, yes. You know, he had it was early in the season, later in the season. Um, but then we would see him make throws that were, you know, 45, 50 yards downfield. And you're like, yep. okay. Um, and what this reminds me of is back in 2015, um, Matt Ryan is and will always be a confidence thrower. He has to be confident in his offensive line. He <laughs> has to be confident in his receivers. And he has to be confident in the scheme. He has to know and, and be comfortable that uh, in, in what is developing on the field. Um, okay. 2015, he short-armed passes. And I think people forget that. But there were people then in 2015 saying he's cooked. You know, yeah. this is, okay. yeah, yeah. So okay. We heard the same story back then. We heard them yeah. saying, oh, Matt Ryan is cooked. Um, you know, the Falcons need to be prepared to draft a new quarterback in 2016. Uh, and of course, once he got comfortable, once they brought in Alex Mack to shore up the yeah. interior of the offensive line. Um, and once he had a year, a full year in that scheme to fully digest what it was, um, you know, 2016, no one was talking about his arm being cooked. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, obviously he's older and you, you got to keep an eye on it because yeah. uh, you know you look at drew Brees, and it, it seemed to happen overnight no you, you spot on you spot on yeah um but i think he probably has two three years left before we'll see a substantial decline where Man, where it you, becomes where it becomes a problem on yeah, the field right. you you are welcome on this podcast from here into eternity. <laughs> you talk good about Matt Ryan. You welcome, man. I love you, buddy. John, yeah, yeah. go ahead. No, yeah, no, Matt, no. Yeah, I mean, Mike, Mike, I don't think you've ever said, uh, you, you said, uh, you said similar early in the season. You're like, I was a little worried about a few passes. I was, because he right. I don't sure. care if you're his yeah. biggest fan, you right. have to be honest about a few of those throws correct. you saw. Yeah, 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 correct. Yeah, and I mean, uh, when you're talking about how he was in that 2015 same thing with Arthur Smith this year. There were so many folks, if you remember, that wanted to fire Shanahan after year one and get I mean, yes. they, and because they they that the offense was terrible and they couldn't get it. And I remember the clip of Ryan on the sideline that they, they had a mic there. The NFL called him and said, "When we figure this out, we're going to be unstoppable." Yeah, you know, and it was uh, 2016. It was what I mean. They were basically. I mean, they couldn't yep. be stopped. And I mean, I, I said that several times this year to some uh, some people I know that where, you know, Arthur Smith's not it. I'm like, dude, seriously, it's been seven games. Like, how can you – and are you yeah. watching what literally on the field with them? Like, I mean, it's – you know, you can't make that that judgment that quick unless, you know, off the field he's doing something insane, which he wasn't clearly. Yeah. So, I mean, like, you have to give him an opportunity to to bring in players. And, and mm-hmm. like like David said earlier with the cast situation, I mean, you, when you're when – you, uh, when you've got – enough to buy a hamburger i mean basically when <laughs> there what else i mean i don't know what you expect from them <laughs> to do i mean yeah. not even the five guys burger like not uh, even not cheap even, like a yeah. regular hamburger yeah like, like the, the, the wendy's 99 cent special <laughs> yeah freaking, you yeah. get yeah you get two or three of those <laughs> yeah i mean it's crazy yeah yeah but i mean and the, and the matt ryan stuff too i mean i, gr- oh, I agree huh no i was gonna say i want to come on i I, I got something else oh, yeah, you yeah, say no. matt ryan what no, I just I agree with what David said. I mean, you know, the big I guess the big question going into the offseason is do they extend him to lessen the hit, make up more room for us to go out, do things in the and and again, not I don't mean extend him and say keep him for five years, but just make it right. more, you know, doable for us to go out and, and actually bring in free agents and sign better, you know, players. I mean, if if that happens, I'm kind of on the boat as if they're if they don't draft a QB this year, which I don't love the QB class this year. I mean, there's a few guys I'd say if they're there, maybe, but they're like we were me and Mike were talking about before. There's so many holes. I guess if you plug one, I mean, you're making a you're making progress. Uh, I don't know that that's the hole you necessarily want to plug first because it's not your biggest need by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to have to have a plan because, like David said, I mean, he's age is what it is and you know age is it's undefeated <laughs> it's never it's undefeated yeah. so i mean except for brady but it will catch him one day yeah i'm exactly. looking forward to that day too he, yeah. yeah when he's 64 he'll finally he <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, so I got a, uh, so I got a question, Dave. It's been a big argument, and I've gotten into heated arguments about this four or five times in my life. Uh, in your opinion, uh, without a Super Bowl ring, without a Super Bowl ring, he has say he stayed with the Falcons one more year. He put some stats on the board. Mm -hmm. Then just say okay, even two more years, and he add put stats on the board. Is Matt Ryan a Hall of Famer to you per personally? Is Matt yes. Ryan a shoe? -in? Yes. Why yeah. you say that? Um, I love this so, dude, John. I, I mean, I love this dude with a fact. Please go ahead. <laughs> now you say, uh, why is that? Well, uh, first of all, stats do matter. Um, okay. You look at this, all the guys statistically who are in front of Matt Ryan, every last one of them is a Hall of Famer. Yep. Um, when you talk about the all-time yardage list, you talk about the touchdown list, um, you know, you look at that, every single last one of those guys is a Hall of Famer. So you're going to tell me that all those guys are Hall of Famers and Matt Ryan is, and then people are going to come back and say, oh, the rings. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of guys up there that don't have rings either. That's what John um, said. And mm -hmm. the thing is, uh, I've watched pro football for a long time, and I've seen a lot of quarterbacks come in and start off really hot, uh, and, and they fade over time for whatever reason, injuries, uh, you know, uh, coaching changes. Um, you know, they just, they, they don't, they can't extend their careers for a quarterback to have a 14 year and probably 15, 16, 17 year career yes. is crazy difficult. Um, look, just look up I-85 to the Carolina Panthers. Cam right. Newton came in with a bang. He was, yep. you know, a dynamic quarterback, uh, was putting up big numbers, you know, obviously not as much as a passer, but, uh, you know, clearly was a, a big weapon for them and couldn't keep it up. Couldn't sustain it. Um, your ability to sustain a career for over a decade, a decade and a half in the NFL. Um, Ryan has only missed three games, two, two games in 2009, one game in 2019. All of that matters. And look, the NFL does not keep quarterbacks around because they like them. Right. You have to stay productive. Um, so, yeah, uh, people keep saying, oh, you know, those records are going to fall over time. Maybe, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you you keep Patrick Mahomes behind terrible offensive lines. He may not make it to age 35 as a quarterback. No, no, that's a good point. So, and, you know, and, Ryan has put up with a lot of crap over his career. And for him to stay as healthy as he has, continue to put up the stats he has, uh, in my mind, is Hall of Fame worthy. Yeah. Out of your fucking mind, David Walker, <laughs> Johnny Yates, Mike Kitt, Matty Ice. I love it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, man. I mean, that's – and he's been sacked 450 times in his career and hit God knows how many times. And just and to, and to miss, what, two to three games like you just said? It's in, I mean, it's almost impossible. I mean, it really almost is. Almost yeah. impossible. I mean, and it's not like he's getting touched. I mean, he's getting hammered. And, get, yeah. like, I mean, big dudes are landing on him. I mean, it's not like it's, uh, you know <laughs> – I mean, and this year especially, like I said. And then, you know, so, I, yeah, I definitely, definitely agree with you on that one. Man, I could turn this to a Matt Ryan podcast, but I don't want to. So I'm gonna let John go ahead. I'm, I'm gonna just let you go ahead. No, uh, well, I mean, yeah. So yeah, the original question was, you know, well, how how did you feel about Arthur Smith and, and Fontenot? And that, that's kind of. So I think Mike and I talked when they hired Arthur, and we were we were kind of like we we knew the offense that he brought from Tennessee, and because everybody wrote Tannehill off before he worked. Yes. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? And he was like. He was done. He's not gonna be. He's gonna be a he's a bust. And then Arthur even worked. Tennessee did. He was their backup. They didn't bring him right. in to be a starter. Yeah, Mariota was right. There. Right. He was behind Mariota. Exactly. I, I forgot about that. I thought he yeah. wasn't a starter. Right. No. Yeah. 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 He just. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know. So I, I like you did. I mean, I didn't go back. I, just, I know I didn't watch as, as much film as you did with, with the Titans' offense, but um, I saw what you know we could do there. And especially after the signing of uh, CP, I thought, okay, it's probably going to be his Henry type of guy because, you know, in a way, because we need, we didn't have anybody. I mean, I, I mean, Mike Davis, uh, you know, did a job. <laughs> he did a job. I mean, you know, Damn. so, so uh, Damn, John. I mean, it is what it is. He got dressed, he put on his cleats, you know, <laughs> he did a job. <laughs> yeah. He, he cashed the checks. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. He, he yeah. showed up on game day. You know, yeah. he did the, the bare minimum there. And yeah. You know, Bass protected probably better than Jalen Mayfield. But anyway, no, he, um, <laughs> probably. <laughs> That's a low yeah. bar. That's, That's a, really, a low bar. This is really my low. man, my aunt can pass protect better. <laughs> man. I'm not. 
Yeah. yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, so anyway, we, you know, and I was pretty excited about Fontenot too, just seeing what he did with that Saints team. I was like, okay, you know, this obviously it looks, looks like he can evaluate talent. So, you know, they excited us about that as well. So, I mean, as the season start, started, you know, I mean, I don't know about you. I had literally zero expectations. Like I, I yeah. didn't know if we were going to win two games. I don't know if we were going to win seven games. And I thought if we won seven to eight, that's a hell of a success to be honest with what we had to go and that was even with Ridley before before the Ridley stuff even happened yeah exactly you know, and um you know I especially coming off of last season um so you know again that I don't know I don't, I, I I I make the mistake of going on the Twitter rabbit hole sometimes and it does I guess where you'll just find this stupid as shit <laughs> but I mean I I've some of the takes on there uh, after you know like I said four or five weeks like I don't know yeah. what you're looking at on the field like what do you expect from these players who <laughs> you don't to see you don't know their names they, these guys are rookies or they're uh you know literally like let's kick the tires on this guy and see if he's still got some tread left i mean like that's what mm -hmm. we were working with you know so mm -hmm. basically uh, yeah so uh yeah I, I didn't i had zero expectations cool. so i was pretty happy to be honest with you with i mean all in all i mean i, I wasn't expecting anything i wasn't expecting a playoff run it was funny we were talking about the playoffs um <laughs> we almost as made far it into the season I as we were. i mean because i mean we kept uh, during the season you know even though our shows we were like i guess we have to talk about it because we're technically in it but i mean you know it's we knew that it, you know we, I, knew I, we wouldn't talk about it for long <laughs> yeah it was <laughs> we knew it was slowly coming to an end yeah but so, yeah I, uh, david if you had to pick a um uh uh a surprise Falcon this year, somebody who you uh, may have um, underestimated who kind of blew your mind in their performance over the season, or they blew your mind in how they improved from week to week uh, on offense and defense, who would you say? I mean, the easy answer is Patterson, right? Like, wow. I don't okay. think anyone expected him to be as uh, a big a contributor on offense um, as, as he was. Uh, yeah, it's got to be him, man. Like, okay. uh, yeah, he's so, think, uh, so like a defense is who? If you had to pick somebody on defense, would you <clears throat> easily AJ Terrell? I, um, I knew that was coming. That's John. I, <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, like, you know, if you look at cornerbacks in the NFL, it generally takes uh, three years yes. for these guys to hit their their peak. Um, the idea of per Terrell not having hit his like his his true ceiling is should be terrifying to yes. NFL offenses. He was a yes. shut he's a true shutdown corner. That's what I see. Yep. Um and in his second year uh, and yep. on a defense with the worst pass rush in the league. Um and and he yeah, he blew my mind. I thought he was going to be better. I thought he was going to be a good cornerback. I did not think he was going to be an all-pro cornerback. Okay. Um, yeah. And Either that's nope. that's a it, massive man. leap. Massive. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I've ever seen a corner go from year 1 to year 2 like that. Not I mean, no. and, and I, I can't I think, think of that's any. a big reason he didn't make the Pro Bowl because nobody who was like everybody's like who the hell is AJ Terrell? I mean, like because yeah, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean he was okay last year. I mean, but I did not see that coming. I mean, nobody did. Mm -hmm. Like you said, nobody did. Nobody did. No. Um, yeah, I mean, and I, I mean, I guess the easy, <laughs> this all these questions can be answered somewhat easily, but the <laughs> um, <laughs> the get the person that you know I guess let us down the most could be a few different people, but Mike. Uh, who would you say on defense? On oh, oh Fowler, Dante Fowler. My, no, not a if fan I could push one, if I could, if I saw the model bus coming, and I could shove <laughs> one person. Because he, because he got every, he has everything that you would want: speed, the height, the strength. No production. I have no understanding. So hold on. So I, ha I have to say this, man, David. John is a uh, the, the thing about our podcast is two people, John really really dislikes okay when you bring him up he gets really mad he just nothing positive dan quinn and vic beasley okay <laughs> vic beasley get under john's skin like dante foul again <clears throat> is it is do you have a falcon who just get under your or who you think we overpaid or who who you just was kind of like no i just because for me it's fowler for john is vic beasley do you have one it could be oh. now or, or, or past Easy, Ray Edwards. I was gonna say. Ray Edwards. Okay, hey, that's that, a good one. That's a good one. I wouldn't have thought of that. Okay, that guy came in. I remember there was a, a game where he, I think he scooped up a fumble, or mm -hmm. uh, and and he had to run it. I think he actually ran it back uh, for a touchdown. And that 
that SOB was winded. Like yeah. he, this guy <laughs> yeah. could not even come into camp and into the regular season in shape. And, yeah. and, and then during the season, you're seeing like, he's a, a, a damned underwear model. I'm like, yeah. what is yeah. happening? <laughs> what is this garbage? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I was I was excited about that signing too. I was like, yes, I was too. Pass rush. This is gonna be great. And then yeah, he's okay. gonna help out Abraham. And exactly. Like, yeah. All that guy did was take terrible, you know, Instagram photos. That was oh, the yeah. extent of his career, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, with Vic, I mean, Vic seemed like the nicest dude on the face of the earth. Yeah. Oh, he was. But, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and that's all I heard. I mean, any anybody in the media that is just the nicest guy ever. Um, which is great, but I don't want my defensive end to be a really nice guy at all. And I mean, and, and unfortunately for him, I mean, he just didn't have, I mean, he had the spin move, but yeah. like, and, and we had, uh, our, our buddy, Chris is a huge saints fan and we have him on during the season for our pre and review for our saints games. And, um, you know, he said, you know, he had a lot of, it was a slot of speed to, to a stop. Like he would, yeah. like, he was like, you, you got to a stoplight and that was it. I mean, you couldn't go yeah. once he hit the tackle. That was, that was that. Um, so that was the only problem was, yeah. That, and and yeah. Well, I don't even want to get into Dan Quinn, but um, yeah, the, uh, uh, no, it's unforgivable. Uh, yeah. and what's uh, unforgivable. Too? Hey, what's hey, John too? is so serious right now. He's on, but I'm, I, I totally agree with you, buddy. But no, I look, totally and that what sucks too is Dan Quinn. Awesome dude. Like awesome human being. Awesome dude. Awesome. Like, fantastic person. human. Just damn it, man. Like, I just, mm, yeah. Man, if we ever want to debate cookies and have like a hippie thing, we would be, <laughs> but as far as football, this is not. Oh, man. If, if we wanted to have a campfire, man, Dan Quinn and Vic Beasley would be at Rice yeah. Krispie Treats, S'mores. <laughs> I don't, man, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, back to the uh, season. I, I, I was also excited about uh, Dean P's hire, just, just looking at what he'd done over his career. And, you know, the teams he had coached, the players he had coached and everything. So, and then we started wondering, like Mike and I were talking during the year, like, man, you know, the, there were so many mistakes being made on the defense. And, the, you know, I think Pease had the press conference and he came out and he said, well, we're only, I don't know, 25%, 30%, whatever he said, into the playbook. And, you know, the back, yeah. you know, these guys are so new, they're so young, you know, and they, they're not quite understanding yet. That was, well, like, I think, I think that was the main reason he said Richie Grant wasn't on the field as much because mm-hmm. he wasn't, getting oh, yeah. it as quickly as the other guys were and so we're like shit is there is there is this i mean is it bad that it's too difficult for these guys like do we need to have it dumbed down a little bit or you know how's this <laughs> but i mean i think it's just part of the yeah. process that you know that they're going to have yeah. to you know this the first year is going to be tough you know and they're going to have to and i i kind of hope and i expect um a second year to be a lot better under under dmps what do you think david yes um so we kind of went the opposite direction defensively. You know, Dan Quinn yes. ran a very simple defense. Um, yeah. Like when he first came here, I still have a T-shirt that was, you know, the beginning of the Dan Quinn era. It said run and hit. And that, like that was his thing. He wanted yeah. fast guys. Yeah. And he was just, he was going to drop in zone and just force you to complete 30 passes in a row. Yeah. Uh, Cause they weren't going to give you anything deep and they're going to hit your heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately he, would let you complete 30 passes in a row. What's the problem with his defense? Right. Um, now, what Pease does is the opposite. It is, you know, once you get outside of that, the, the defensive front, so you get to the linebackers, the safeties, and the corners, um, those guys in his defense are interchangeable. And they're interchangeable because he does not want the quarterback or the offensive line at any point in time to know what's going on in the secondary. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is looking to cause confusion. And those are generally some of the best defenses in the league, but they also mm. take the longest to install. I got you. Um, I got you. And the thing with Richie Grant is, you know, people are like, oh, why is it taking him so long? It's not so much that he doesn't know the playbook. It is that in a defense like that, where literally at the snap, you're showing the coverage before the snap. And at the snap, the minute that ball moves, you have guys changing the coverage after okay. the fact. Mm. Um that requires that every single player on that defense has not just a full understanding of the playbook. It needs to be like muscle memory. It can't be something like, you know, if, if you've ever shot a gun, uh, you, you can learn pretty quickly how to hold a gun, you know, how to position yourself, get your body ready. Um, but it doesn't mean you can do it instinctively. Like you have to do it over and over and over and over again 
to be able to pull that gun and, and, and shoot it quickly and accurately. Um, and it's the same thing with this kind of defense where, where you want to change up, you want to disguise coverages. Uh, it's, again, like with all the, the corners, the safeties and linebackers, which incidentally are the, is the group with the exception of HHRL, that is the group that struggled um, yeah. the most in the first half of the season. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you look at the, the first half of the season, they, they had the biggest struggles, but look at what started happening in the second half of the season. Yep. Um, you look at the Buffalo bills game and what they started doing to, uh, uh, to, to Allen up there. And that is a sort of a sneak peek of what's coming as long as they can get the pass rush addressed. Uh, and as long as these guys begin to really sort of instinctively get, and they can quickly react and execute the playbook. So yes, I, I'm a big, I'm still a big believer in DMPs. We had the worst defense in the league. Um, and I know people want to write off coaches after one year, but there's a reason Dean Pease was coaching in his seventies. Uh, yes. and there's a reason Tennessee wanted him to come back after yep. he retired. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. So, you know, it's yeah. for all the Twitterati's who are, you know, brilliant defense coordinators in the waiting, <laughs> um, yeah. it, it's, it takes time and, uh, he's, he's building something for the long haul. Um, and that means yeah. sometimes the, the short-term sacrifices, you're going to have to watch some bad football, missed yeah, assignments, yeah. guys in the wrong place, guys that, you know, you see receivers wide open because yeah. the two corners, you know, forgot their assignments, safety mm -hmm. forgot his assignment. Um, when it clicks, it's going to be a much, much different defense. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah, and I think the height, the, probably the height of that was the Cowboys game where you saw just – chaos in the secondary yeah. and I mean yeah. and, and followed up by the Patriots game which we probably couldn't have played a worse team after the Cowboys of playing Belichick and, and that offense and what and even even with Matt Jones as, as and he didn't I mean he didn't, he didn't have a great game but I mean just nope. but like 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 David said in that defense like you have to know not only your job but everybody else's job and what yes. they're responsible for because if you don't and you end up in the wrong spot then yeah. you know that's, that's going to be trouble for for everyone but yeah and I I, I agree man I I I thought that uh, initially I was like a little worried and I thought, you know what? No, looking back at the teams he's coached and it wasn't an overnight switch, even with the guys he had back then that were veterans. I mean, this took a long, mm -hmm. this took a while for the veterans to get, not just rookie players. So, yeah. I mean, it was, it was something different. So, you know, like if, I just don't think people that, that kind of look at it on the surface and they just, you know, want the results to happen overnight. And it's, and that's not, football especially at this level <laughs> and no. i mean when you're working and if you yeah it's just i don't know it's it's yeah, he said it but I, I think he said it best when um if i'm subconscious with it then i can react instinctively to the play right. but i have yes. to remember my assignment i can't react instinctively to any that'll be yeah. like man next season or the third season hopefully that that split second is that split second, a yep. massive difference in the nfl it's a difference between a pick difference. six a pick right. six well, is the difference between yeah. that you know you being able to jump the route and you react exactly and or a tip ball that's... or anything yeah yep or yeah. tip ball yep yeah yep. and uh and like you said i mean after after that I, honestly after the patriots game you started to see a pretty hefty increase you know improvement across the, mm -hmm. the win until the season until the end of the season um a few hookups here and there but overall definitely got better um uh, actually, and... hold on john let me yeah. say uh, i i david i gotta ask you a question now if you have to pick a Falcon for next season, the Falcon has the Falcon can be a Falcon that was on any Falcon team that you've ever seen. OK, but you have to pick one Falcon player to add to our team for next season and you get him at the peak of his talents, but you can get him for one season, for one season, any Falcon at the peak of his talents to help us specifically with our team for next year. Who do you bring? Mm. I want to say Julio, but I'm gonna I'm not I'm not gonna say Julio. Okay. Um, that's that's very tempting me. though. Yeah, that's I know. Not, I, I see you. Guys. It really okay. is. <laughs> Julio, at his peak was unbelievable. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, okay. But I'll tell you what. Um, when he was at his peak, uh, Jamal Anderson at running back. Oh, steamroll guys. That's he could a, steamroll guys. Yes, and he was back. fun oh, to watch could. as a running back. Yeah. But that would help us so much next season. Yeah. Damn, that'd be – hey, I'm, you go, John. You say who? Ooh. Next season. One season. Huh. 
at the All peak right. of his talents. Peak of his talents. Just because uh, I'll go defense just to be different. And I mean, Dion's the easy one to say on corner because we, you know, but I mean, we got AJ, we got AJ, so I'm not going to say that. Um, I'll go John Abraham at his height because, oh, damn, do, man. damn, do we need a yeah. pass rusher? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's a yeah. good one, too. Uh, man, I'm going Dion. I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm <just> <laughs> oh, my God. I, Dion and AJ on the field. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Who oh can my complete God. it? But I'm going to tell you, man, they would have to cover for 10 minutes per play. <laughs> but, you get no push. No. But Seriously. imagine that. Wait, well, hey, no. Oh, before man. before before we actually before we go on the next uh, topic, David, what was your opinion on Fabian Morell? I thought he got um, kind of a – not the – like a, a raw deal, but I mean, from the from the fans, it seemed like he was definitely the whipping boy. And I, and I oh, thought, <laughs> oh, for that, yeah, no doubt about it. Um, and and I, I definitely, I mean, not a not a great season, but I was looking at it from a point. I was okay. AJ and Mike and I talked about it, like if you're not going to AJ, well, clearly you're going to go to the other side of the field, you know. And yeah. typically that's where Fabian is at. And we looked at the numbers. I mean, they weren't terrible. I mean, like terrible, no. terrible. And I thought he actually I was like, this is not that bad for a young corner opposite of your star corner, mm -hmm. you know, that's also going into the defense. So, I, you know, people were ready to just replace him like that. I'm not ready to throw him out just yet. I, I kind of want to see what year two looks like. I am. He, I agree. He, he was, you know, the, the thing was, and this is what I love about what Fontenot did this year. Um, Moreau was cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, and they did not pay him a lot of money. And the thing was, he started the season rough without a doubt, mm -hmm. um, as did most of the secondary. <laughs> right. Um and, you know, he got picked on, but there was a stretch in the middle of the season towards, you know, towards the back half of the season um, where he was playing some really good football. That's what and I see. He, he was, in my mind, living up more than his contract, than what we had paid him. Um, I would bring him back. If we could get him on the same deal, I'd bring him back in the New York minute. Oh, yeah. Um, and look, that doesn't mean you, like, if a, if, you have a top tier corner that falls to you in the draft, mm -hmm. grab them. Okay. You know, yeah. Yeah, you can, yeah. if you can put two bookend corners on that defense, um, you know, that that's terrifying for offense coordinators. Yeah. Um, so bringing back Moreau doesn't mean you don't address the position in the draft. Right. Mm -hmm. Bringing back Moreau means you have a guy who's experienced in the defense who can give you stretches of quality play, who doesn't cost you a lot of money, mm -hmm. um, who is still relatively young and, you know, worst case, if you bring in another guy that supplants him, you've got a cornerback three, cornerback four, who you you know you can put in as a starter in a pinch because God knows the NFL is all about injuries and, you yeah. know, what kind of experience depth you have. Yeah, I bring back Fabian Rowe and it, it easily. You know, he's not a great corner, but right. we don't need him to be a great corner. We're not paying him, you know, $15 million a year. We paid him a million. Mm -hmm. um, and I think we got more, more than the, our money's worth out of him. So, yeah. Uh, now, again, depends on the money. Right. Um, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not going to pay a Fabian Moreau three, five million a year. No, 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 no. But no. for a million a year, absolutely, I bring him back. That's a great answer. Great yeah. Answer. No, I agree. Um, all right. So the topic that I guess surrounded the team most of the year, um, Calvin Ridley. I mean, and nothing seemed to change from week to week with the team is what they were saying. Mike seemed to think that behind closed doors, they had to know. Like they've had to be in talking at some point and said, okay, because you know, and, I, and I'm I sort of agree because I don't know that especially now like you know I think they asked uh I can't remember if it was in the, the end of the season press conference or, or not but that did but they, they asked Arthur or, or Terry you know have you heard from him and is there a certain date that you say okay I've got to make a decision here to mm -hmm. you know what are you going to do and they still just they basically just well we've given them the time and it basically not, I don't know what you took from that press conference I mean we I think we joked about it online but i <laughs> I just kind of watched him. Like I, I didn't learn a thing. I don't know anything from. We won't. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But um, and I, I don't expect them to go up there and to say this is what we're going to do and spit it all out. But I mean, you know, it was just one of those things. But um, yeah, it was one of those situations. It's like, man, I, I loved Calvin. Still do. I, I, I hope he come. I hope he's healthy. I hope he comes back. I hope he's right because God knows we need a receiver. We need him badly. I think we probably went to two, maybe two, three more games this year if we have him um, no, uh, on the roster. Yeah. Um, but um, I don't know. I, I the, the longer it went on this season and the, the more as, as quiet as it stayed, I began to think that maybe he doesn't play for us again. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, and I, I think the Falcons know what's going on for the most yeah. part. Um, 
and you know they're very Belichickian in their approach to <laughs> yeah. you know, like, they're just not going to, they're not going to give away anything. Now I will say this um, other than the little Snapchat thing, which I think got blown way out of proportion with what Ridley posted on Snapchat. Oh, stats. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the whole stats thing. I think it was, I think people read into that what they wanted to read into that. Um, it, we haven't heard anything. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I'll say this. Um, I actually got the chance to interview Calvin before the season began. Um, it was part of the Pepsi, uh, the whole promotional thing that he was doing with Pepsi and their, the, their favorite meals that they would have, you know, before a game. Uh, and this was like some sort of nachos thing. And I was like, that's probably going to slow you down on the field, Calvin. Yeah. Um, but anyhow, that it would not be my choice. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, when I was doing the interview, um, and I remember I, when I got done, I, you know, and talk to their alcoholic writers and um you know, they're asking me how it went and I, I was like he seemed off hmm. there was there was something like he you know I, i've seen calvin interviews before um and he seemed off something was like he you know and maybe it was just the uh, him being tired of interviews and you know so i don't want to read too much into it right but that that stuck with me throughout the year it was it was like you know, I, I actually think, you know, people are like, oh, you know, his, his mental health suffered during the season. I, I think there's a chance it was not good coming into the season. Man, he was missing assignments. If y'all remember, he was running the wrong routes a few times. He missed the yeah. assignments. He was... Yeah, no, yeah, he, was so, having, he wasn't having a t- – no, before he – yeah, you're right. Before he caught it quits, he wasn't having a great year by any uh, – even no. a good year at that. Uh, I mean, but, yeah, I mean, that's yeah. – Now, and again, I'm, I'm speculating. Sure. Right. Um, but you know, I think it, it it just shows the seriousness of of mm-hmm. you know the, the mental health issues is a lot of people were assuming, oh, well, it's because he dropped passes. I'm like, no, no, that's right. that's not it. He dropped passes um, his whole or, career. I mean, right. That's and, or he had, you know, he struggled in games. And no, he's he's had games where he struggled. Mm-hmm. Um, I I I personally think that um it's all legit. I, I think it may have been there, the seeds of it may have been there before the season. Um and, uh, you know, uh, uh, I just hope he gets better. Yeah. Um, I, I would say at this point, if you want to try to figure out the odds of him being on the team, flip a coin. Yeah, uh, I think that's about where they're at. It's about 50-50 odds of him being on the team next year uh, versus not. I hope he's there. I hope he comes back healthy and, and strong. Uh, like you said, we need him. We need, yeah. we need a good receiver. Um, and I think he can be that. But, yeah, uh, flip a coin, man. Yeah. 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 And I, it, Killed me too because he was uh, he was on the sidelines for the Georgia Alabama SEC championship game. You know, there on the Alabama mm-hmm. sideline, and to see the reaction on Twitter, you would think that he was like suited up and was you know out there. And I was like, right, it blew me away. I was like, because a guy's having issues doesn't mean he is in, he's in the in his closet in the corner, right, shaking <laughs> twenty four hours a day. Like that's this is the uh, the stupidity around it. I come. I was like, of course he's going to still live his life. It doesn't mean he doesn't have things going yeah. on that's you know it's just i don't know um like like i said you know we we didn't get on twitter a lot prior to doing the show we, we're on there now more obviously to, yeah. to uh, you know get the show out there and, and interact with more fans and i'm just like man i man you, i'm gonna tell you like you see the wild like the falcon fans turn on falcons like so fast yeah. i mean they turn overnight and they and they want you off the team they want the coach fire it's no logic to the no Falcon fans. No, yeah, it's no. Yeah, well, if you listen to Falcons Falcon. fans, we would have new coaches every single year. Oh my god, no, yeah. they do it every yeah. year. And we said Matt Ryan would have been fired thirty times in his career. Right. By that date. Oh, I think. <laughs> and I don't. I don't I'm, I'm gonna tell you what I do. It's called Buffalo Wild Wings fans. Is you put on a jersey <laughs> and you match your hat and you know nothing about the sport. You just eat wings and you match the jersey with your hat and you look cute, but you don't really know what you're talking about. Yeah, or you watch two logical thing like Matt. Um, David and I want everybody to hear this. David and John just both told y'all that you can't judge a coach on offense, defense, or coordinator in year one. That's yeah. that's a ridiculous notion to even think that Arthur Smith was going to come in and we was going to turn the whole team around, or like Dean Pease was going to have our defense top five. Y'all are ridiculous. Be patient. <laughs> yeah. you I, mean, I can't even. Run, that, that, I'm telling them, man. It's people who like work at Chipotle who take time to learn how to roll a damn burrito. That's right. Now you talking about playing cornerback and you have the nerve to be so judgmental. Like he should learn it in two weeks. 
Man, yeah. you couldn't roll a taco. It took you two months to roll a taco correctly <laughs> without getting written up. <laughs> so, you know, leave AJ Terrell and the rest of those dudes alone, man. It's a hard job. Being in the NFL is school. Part of it is school. So mm -hmm. leave the people alone and give them patience to learn. That's all I'm saying. John and David just told you that. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I think a lot of it is kind of just they want reactions you know so they're going yeah. to just say this off the wall. i mean some some people i'm sure believe it too but i mean like some of the stuff you see is just so off the wall i'm like good god like you can't believe like you just can't yeah. honestly believe that you know um like and mm -hmm. I, and last week david on our, or our last show um i told mike because I, I kind of went off on a rant because it seemed like after the last game like there was this just load of matt ryan just filth on the twitter I and know, i oh, yeah. and and i and i and i was like i think there's there seems to be like three or four different sex of like Matt of you know Matt Ryan whatever you call it fans whatever there's the unconditional love and support that you know that's Mike you know <laughs> like president of and then there's like the 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 ones that are like totally supportive but obviously like will hold them accountable then there's mm -hmm. the ones that just believe that you know, it's just time to move on nothing against Matt, Matt it's just time to move on they want a new quarterback in the system that's fine then there's the ones that's just completely throw hate at him for whatever I can't figure it out man like I don't I just I can't figure it out like I, of all the players the stuff he does off the field the most genuine dude to play looks like to play with the teammates every teammates loved him I, I just can't I couldn't wrap my head around it but and yeah. and the same way I was trying to uh I was saying on our last show David that uh being a quarterback is like being the logo of a team you like you the face yep. And that's also a job as far as how you conduct yourself off the field. And you got it, man, 15 years, 14 years without being on TMZ, without getting caught cheating on your wife, smoking weed <laughs> at the strip club. Matt Ryan has been flawless, man. You got to give him the way he conduct himself, the way he dressed, the way he talked, the way he's, he's a professional quarterback. You can't ask for yeah. more than that. He's a class act, man. Yeah, that, I, I really like and obviously we rolled like we rolled back around to Matt Ryan somehow. But I mean, the, uh, <laughs> I told you, hey man, I could do this ten ways. I could do it ten different ways. But, go ahead. but, uh, but David, I think yeah, see, I, I there think, you go. <laughs> but David, I think you said it might have been today. I, I read it. Maybe it was your tweet or somebody, the uh, the hit percentages on QBs. It's oh, it's awful. It's like one in like one in four basically. Um, yeah, so that's that's just to get. Um, a like serviceable below average, right? Serviceable. serviceable, yeah. Um, yeah, 75 percent of the guys drafted since 2009 are either out of the league or poor quality quarterbacks, like guys that you wouldn't even want as a backup. 75, it's so three out of four. Um, yeah, I, I went back and I did, uh, I, I pulled up all 153 guys that were drafted and I ranked all of them based on you know their where they're at in the league, if they're in the league, um, mm -hmm. their quality as far as you know, whether they're a great starter, a good starter, average, poor. And uh, it, here's the other thing. The hit rate for quarterbacks drafted in the top five is awful. It's awful. Um, oh, because you go back. And, yeah, it, it, that's the big part of it. Um, and you look at, like, you know, Josh Allen, he wasn't taken in the top five. Nope. Um, Patrick Mahomes, not taken in the top five. That's Lamar Jackson, point. not taken in the top five. Usually those teams that are in the top five are there for a reason. They pull mm -hmm. in a quarterback, they put him on an awful team and the guy flames out. Um, and, point. and a lot of times uh, teams reach for quarterbacks. And mm -hmm. I, I, I think ultimately Wilson in this past draft class will be that guy with the jets. Uh, surprise, surprise. Yeah, and by the way, no other team has drafted more quarterbacks in, in since 2009, the New York jets have drafted nine quarterbacks uh, since 2009. Damn. Um, so yeah, when I did that analysis of, uh, of these draft classes, cause I wanted to see, you know, since Matt Ryan came into the league, what has it been like? And, um, it's terrible. Um, which, you know, when you're talking about what should the front office do, if look, the saints probably could have moved on from Drew Brees a year sooner, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? The arm fell off. It was obvious, mm -hmm. but here's the thing that people forget. The Saints were in the playoffs in Drew Brees last year. Yeah. Yep. He was still, even with a subpar arm, he was still a good enough quarterback to take that team to the playoffs. As, as his arm was being held together with bubble gum and duct yep. tape. Yep. Right. And he still took them to a playoff <laughs> game because 
the, the arm is not the only thing that matters for an NFL quarterback. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that the brain that's about knowing the defense is about getting your guys in the right place. So look, if the Falcons hang on to Matt Ryan one year too long, it's not the worst decision in the world. Yeah. Um, and honestly, I, I, I would lean towards that camp versus being the team that let go of him a little bit too soon yeah. and watched him have success elsewhere as you, yeah. you know, begin to flounder with a young quarterback yeah. that statistically you're probably not going to hit on. Like the yeah. odds of you hitting on a quarterback are really bad in the NFL because it is mm-hmm. hard to find a good quarterback. Um, so, yeah, I, I've got a lot of quarterback opinions. <laughs> I, I was saying that. I, look, I was saying that so many times. There are yeah. people who want him to go after every bad game. They want him to go, or at every game period, they want him to go. But I'm thinking, if y'all knew how many teams in NFL have to wait a decade to get a good quarterback. Or longer. Or two, man, when you see, like, the Washington yeah. Redskins and the Cleveland Browns and the Buffalo Bills, how long them teams – you don't want you don't ever know if it's gonna be 15 years before you get before you replace Matt Ryan. So you can't be so quick to move on. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. and then the fans that are that pissed off now, like imagine having Just, 10 years of like yeah, recycling quarterbacks. I mean, yeah. like or you know, having to get I mean, that's I mean look at the Denver Broncos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. Once Peyton Manning retired, uh, they had a top tier defense after he retired. Um, yep. for several years so you know Von Miller uh is one of the best pass rushers in the league they had a top five defense for several years could barely get to the playoffs yep. all because of the quarterback they drafted eight quarterbacks since 2009 Damn, that's um, crazy. so look it's you know it, when you find a good quarterback you hold on to them yeah, that's uh, right. and, and in my mind you ride them out you, you ride them out as long as you have to if you hold on to like I said if you hold on to them a year too long um, you're still you're you're maximizing the the productivity mm-hmm. of that quarterback. Yeah, um, and yeah, we've said it a few times until it's visible that he's the one hurting your team. You know? Like right. he's the, until he's the issue, then I don't I don't understand why you don't build around him at that point. And then and like and, and yeah, like we said earlier, you're going to inevitably draft his successor. That's that's mm-hmm. that's just facts, you know. Mm-hmm. But doesn't I, I don't know that it has to be this year necessarily, um, especially when there's other needs that could help the team. Um, you know, when you've got a, for one first round and two seconds, you know, you've legitimately got three potentially starters right there mm-hmm. that you could plug in. And like you said, I didn't think we we're that far off. I mean, if you take care of a few positions, that kind of leads us into you don't see, or at least I mean, on outside, you don't see too many GMs or coaches move on from a player they drafted after one year do you think mayfield was bad enough this year that they've got to make a change knew it was coming i I knew it was coming john i could smell it from a mile away he was so epically bad this year no do you say okay sorry but i screwed up on that one i gotta we gotta figure this out um i I think what you have to do is realize um first of all i don't think the plan was ever for him to play a snap this year uh you remember Josh Andrews was supposed essentially to the named starter right. and then right. broke his thumb in mm-hmm. the first week of practice in the regular season. Um, and then I, th- I think when you look at who was on the roster, it was like, okay, you know, the only other person who got any kind of snaps with the first team was Jalen Mayfield. We need to put him in there. Um, and yeah, he had, he was the worst pass blocker in the league. Mm-hmm. Now he actually turned out to be a fairly decent run blocker by the time mm-hmm. the year was done. Um, but if I'm the GM and no one's invited me, so take it for what it's worth. Uh, if I'm the GM, I'm bringing in a veteran, uh, to compete left you. guard. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to go with the young guy again. Um, uh, although I'll, I'll say this, if you, the other philosophy I have is if you overdraft in the trenches, um, and you, you ultimately end up finding multiple starters, that's a good problem to have. For sure. Like if, if yes. they if they drafted yes. another offensive lineman and they're like, oh hey, we have four quality starters for the interior of the offensive line, um, that is a hell of a good problem to have. You have you have draft capital for you know trades and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, so if they if someone falls to them and they take someone in the first round, like to compete uh, somewhere on the offensive line, great, do it. Um, yeah. Um, but I, I think you you can't go into next year hoping and praying that Mayfield 
makes so big of a leap that he goes from the worst guard of the league to being just league average. So this mediocre. Because that, that would yeah. that would be a he's, massive leap. He said it's to be a massive leap to make the man league average. <laughs> yeah, this is as, a, as a pass blocker. As yeah, a pass blocker. As a pass blocker. Which again, look, when it comes to the interior of the of the offensive line, you can give tackles help. Um, Aaron Freeman said it best. You can give tackles help. You can put a tight end out there. You can have uh, your running back go out and chip the you know a pass rusher. It is almost it is impossible to give an interior offensive lineman help. Um, and there was a reason that at the at the absolute peak of the Saints' offense with Drew Brees. They had two mammoth men at left yep. guard and right guard. Yep. You did not pressure Drew Brees up the middle. It did not happen. Yep. Um, and I think with, with Matt Ryan, you got to do the same. So you can't I, – I think Mayfield can turn into something eventually, but I would not bet on him making that leap in just one offseason. Bring in the veteran. Um, worst case, if Mayfield takes the job and the veteran has to sit on the bench, you've got good depth. Um, you know, most likely scenario is he gets beat out and he gets another year to develop. Right. So, yeah, thank, but thank I'm, I'm God. not gonna like cut him like he's cheap. Yeah, you know, at this right, point, right. it's yeah. I mean, thank God, uh, Chris Listrom was like maybe the best right yeah. guard because my God, if he had been mediocre, yeah. then Matt maybe have not made it through the Matt season. would be dead, right? Matt would be yeah. dead, yeah. Face yeah. down, we'd somewhere. be talking yeah. about replacing him because Matt is in the ground. Matt, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And I, and, and on the offensive line too, McGarry was a guy who just, he pissed me off because it's like the consistency. You just, it was like there, you'd see flashes were like, yeah. damn, that's yeah. great. And then all and then on, in the other plays, it was just like, Whoa, I, I you know, I, so I don't, I'm still, I mean, kind of up in the air on that guy too. I'm not. I, I don't uh, know. Yeah. Man, uh, so man, David, who's, who's your favorite Falcon on this current team? Hmm. Player I mean, I'm not going to say Matt Ryan because it's always Matt Ryan. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, for all the reasons you said earlier. You yeah. Know, um, and I, I, I am unapologetic in being a Matt Ryan fan. I love um, him, man. I'm the same way. <laughs> Out of your Falcon mind. All right, so <laughs> who do you say if you're not saying Matt? Just from no. this particular team. From this team, um, as far as favorite player, I am – so excited about Kyle Pitts. Uh, yeah. yeah. I he I I think his I don't think people fully understand what he did this year. Yeah. Um I because I saw people saying, you know, oh, it was an underwhelming year. I'm like, what in the hell are you watching? By uh, what standard? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like he broke all these different records, and oh yeah, well, he did it in 17 games. No, he actually did it in 16 because he barely played in the 17th game. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh we have a tight end who by pro football focuses standards was up there with guys like Mark Andrews, uh, Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, and Rob Gronkowski in, year uh, one. in his performance in year one, in year one, in his rookie year, he leapfrogged again over all the other tight ends in the league. And he's mm-hmm. in the conversation already with those guys. Um, he's, he's just turned 22. Mm-hmm. His potential uh, is terrifying. Okay. I, you know, people said, okay, this guy's, he's a wide receiver. Um, I understand what you're saying. He, pl- he takes a lot of snaps in line. He, he, he was a run blocker in a lot of plays, um, but he has wide receiver potential. And the, the only guy I can think of that, um, that from the body type to the way he plays to just the, when he turns up field, having speed that is, uh, just catches you off guard um, because I watched him uh, in college and I watched him in the pros was Calvin Johnson. Um, yeah, ooh, that's ooh. when look, when Calvin Johnson would catch the ball and cause Calvin Johnson was, you know, same size, about six, five, six, six. When, when CJ would catch the ball and he would turn up field, all of a sudden these, he doesn't look like he's running fast. Yeah. But all of a sudden these guys are just like falling behind yeah. him. Mm-hmm. That's and like we Julio. saw the same thing with yeah, we like saw the Julio. same thing with Pitts, yeah, with with Julio. Um, but we saw the same thing with Pitts as a tight mm-hmm. end, where he he catches the ball and you're like, oh look, he's ru- he just gained 25 yards, mm-hmm. and he did that repeatedly. 
I am so excited about his potential. Like I, I get giddy thinking about what he's going to do in year two, especially when you put some other weapons on the field where he's mm-hmm. not getting doubled on every single yep. play. Oh my God. Yeah. Uh, that's Matt Ryan it. may throw 4,000 yards just that's, to Kyle Pitts. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, mean, I that, would love it. That's what makes it so impressive. I, I mean, yeah. uh, the people that, that, like you were saying, this, you know, had the negative things to say, that he did this with every team knowing, okay, he's one of two possible dangers we have to worry about on offense. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know, him and CP, if we know where they're at, I mean, and so they're going in. I mean, because, I mean, I love Russell Gates. I love what Russell Gates did this year to step up. Love it. Because he, you know, he's not a number one in any team anywhere. Mm-hmm. But he had, he was forced into the role, and he did the best he could, you know. I mean, that – so I had nothing but praise to say for him. But, I mean, for the defense is to go in and go, look, I mean, all we have to do, we're going to double this guy, and we're going to make sure we know where CP's lined up at. And then to – for – Kyle to still have those numbers and to see that speed also it's combined with the strength stiff arming guys like they're I mean just leaving them oh, in the dark. I mean man yeah I'm with you I'm with you I, I can't wait to see just get a full complement of receivers have a have a running game that's it was crazy the offensive line yeah but right. you know <laughs> uh the we talked about it uh quickly before the show the, the PFF run blocking grade for the team was sixth uh in the league uh <laughs> which blows my mind because what we had, what about a four week run there? We actually, we were like a hundred. It was literally four with, uh, weeks. Yeah. Uh, four straight game. weeks. Yeah. yeah. And then like every other game, it was 60, 50, you know, 34, you know, and I was like, how the hell did that? Uh, and I, and I like the blank cut a check. I think he cut a blank <laughs> check. <laughs> no way. Hey, PFF, we, we need something good on this list. Um, yeah. Right. right. But uh, no, but I think, you know, listening to you and Evan talk about it, I, you know, PFF is not a definitive thing like y'all were saying no, on, on your podcast, but it does give you a metric to go by, and they're typically pretty pretty spot on. So it was kind of yeah. like that that was a, that was one that blew my mind though. And another one, and this wasn't a PFF, but um, well, no, actually it was. I think you guys said that um, Matt had the second most balls that should have been caught that were dropped. Yeah, is that right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's that is a, an important stat. So That's important. So for every every Matt Ryan hater. He had zero help on the offensive line. His best wide receiver took three quarters of the year off. Not Man, because Julio he had Jones to. left. Julio Jones left. Julio He's Jones got one tied in. Yep. He's got new Mike Davis. Right. He's got a new coordinator. Mike Davis was his running back. CP was occasionally, actually a decent amount. Um, and his receivers are dropping balls they should have caught. Uh, so I, I and mean, his numbers were about even to what he normally do. Matt and Ryan and then, oh, and we said what we say, Matt, Matt or Mike last week. Matt was uh, eight in the red zone, eighteen touchdowns and zero interceptions this year. Zero in his, and for the, in the red, red zone. zone. So, I mean, I, yeah. I don't, I don't know what else you. He, he, when we said he has his physical limitations, and he, we know we everybody, everybody knows that. Um, he's not going to get outside the pocket and run and, and burn anybody by any stretch of the imagine. In fact, I, it pains me to see him run. Like it hurt. It physically hurts Same. me. Like it, yeah. I, yeah. Well, I just, I, my leg hurts when I see him run. <laughs> but, but, but so that's why what Davis earlier, like if we're going, if we have Matt for two more years, or three more years, like that line has got to be, I mean, it's got to be improved because he, we can't let him, yeah. like he said, his confidence has got to get back to the level where he knows he can say in the post game, all he wants, I trust those guys. No, you don't. You, there's a few guys you know you don't trust. And as soon as you yeah. snap mm-hmm. the ball, you're looking to your left going, oh, shit, here we <laughs> go. So <laughs> yeah. that's just that's just yeah. fact. So, I mean, yeah. I, yeah. He was uh, – Matt Ryan was hit 130 times this year. Ooh. 130, uh, which was the most in the league. The, the next highest team was Chicago, which was 114 times. So he was hit 16 times more than the next highest that's team. Crazy. And he was sacked 40 times this year. Um so yeah, for those who are saying he, you know, this, and honestly, like I said, it, it's, and this is true for all quarterbacks, whether they're mobile or not. Um, interior pressure is a killer. Yeah. Um, you put, I don't care if you put Michael Vick back there in his prime, you get interior pressure on that quarterback. The whole play is gone. It blows up. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why you, you have to, you have to fix. And look, here's the thing. Um, Matt Hennessy wasn't particularly good at pass blocking either. But if you've got uh, a much better option at left guard, um, Matt Hennessy can be serviceable. And you've already drafted Drew Dahlman, so let those guys let those guys mm-hmm. compete. Let Drew Dahlman have a full offseason. 
but it, you have to fix one of those positions. I would rather they fix left guard um, because they've spent, you know, two, literally two draft classes in a row yeah. drafting a center. Yeah. Um, let's hope one of those guys pans out. Um, fix left guard. And I think, you, and honestly, I think you fix left guard. This offense uh, takes a, a leap just from that. Even if you don't improve the weapons, no, I think it takes a leap yes. by that alone. A leap. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I was I was going to mention uh, center position too. And I mean, it looks like uh, I mean, th- there's a ton of folks looking at Tyler Linderbaum from Iowa. And I mean, I've seen the the film. I mean, he's I mean, I don't know. That I've seen a center pull and run like that. I mean, he's down. I don't know if you seen anything on David. I mean, it's crazy to look at how athletic that guy is. But like, yeah, you, I don't really want to take a center three. <laughs> I mean, for three drafts, I mean, three years in a row, <laughs> unless he can, unless he can play left guard, which I'm sure he probably could figure it out. I mean, you know, I don't know, but uh, yeah. Um, but now switching over to the defensive side of the ball. I mean, we, the pass rush, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, we've all talked about uh, for the entire year because it's like, I mean, just epically bad. I mean, to see Grady put up what he does with zero help around him. I mean, no, no. it's like, I mean, it's like you walk into a jewelry store and you got a diamond and then you've got literally three dirty rocks like right next mm-hmm. to him. Like, what the hell are these doing in the same case? Yeah. I mean, like, so, I mean, it's, you know, I, I, I would love to see what he could do with an actual edge rusher any and, some, and anybody, any team that any help. Is, he's, he's going to be doubled immediately. So the fact that yeah. he was getting through and making his plays in the backfield is just a testament to how the monster that guy is. Mm-hmm. But I mean, whether they address it on, I, 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 I mean, there are some good passers in this draft. And that's, I mean, looking at the draft, I mean, I've seen, you know, corner pick first. There's it's very deep at corner, um, mm-hmm. possibly a pass rusher. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I would be fine either way, honestly. If they pick pass rusher, if they believe that's their guy, you know, because like, we, keep, we keep hearing Terry and, and Arthur say they're not going to reach, they're going to pick the best player at that position. Yeah. You know, so and I'm, Mike and I were talking. Hell, we might see a receiver go number one again. <laughs> so, I mean, oh man, I, 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 I mean, I hope it not, could happen, but it could happen. Hey, it could I happen. Mean, so let's t- hold, on, hold on. Is there like anyone who you specifically want, David? Is there one player you saw you think is coming up that you want, or is it no. just like the? New I, I'm a big, I'm a big believer in uh, BPA now, uh, like a modified version of BPA. I, right. I think that fits your needs. Running- yeah, it, it running back. I would I wouldn't take a first round running back, okay. um, unless you think they're literally like going to be a first like ballot that. Hall of Famer. Okay. Um, I and actually I don't know that I would take a wide receiver in the top five again. Um, I, I think you're seeing a lot more receivers come out. Uh, the these draft classes tend to be more deep with wide mm-hmm. receiver than they they have been historically. Mm-hmm. But other than those positions. Um, it, it, again, if you overdraft the position of cornerback and you have three high quality corners, that's a good problem to have. Yep. Mm-hmm. If you overdraft pass rushers and you have like four really good pass rushers, that is a fantastic problem to have. Mm-hmm. If you overdraft offensive linemen and you have seven quality starting offensive linemen, that is a great problem to have. Mm-hmm. Um, so I uh, go BPA in the trenches or at the premier positions like corner uh, and quarterback. Mm -hmm. And if you believe in those guys, take them. Uh, So for me, if they see an edge rusher that they fall in love with and he's there, take them. If you see a corner that they're in love with, take him. Uh, If they see a quarterback who they think is going to be the franchise uh, cornerstone for 15 years after Matt Ryan, take him. Take him. Um, But get the best guy the the only way you rebuild this roster is by getting the absolute best players and sometimes that means you may double dip the position and you may be shallow the position for a year or so um do it because you don't fix a roster in one year anyways nope okay not this roster no yeah, not this one no yeah. we said that i don't know how many times and i mean looking at the defensive line i mean and i i know i'm going to use alabama as, a, as an as an example on another college team but that's mm-hmm. their defensive line every year is ridiculous but it's not necessarily because it is because of the talent but they are so deep at defensive line they, they yep. one guy goes out the next guy comes in they are and i mean it's not gonna be the same nfl because of the contracts and the money but mm-hmm. if you can build a line where you can get in an edge rusher and you're not losing a lot for guys taking breaks man in the fourth quarter that 
it's going to show up big time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. I mean, yeah, because that's, that's just, you know, that's, that's where the, the difference is made. So yeah, I'm with you, man. I, I take, take the best player that's there that kind of fits your needs. And I mean, which we have a lot of needs, so that's kind of everywhere. <laughs> it works well. Um, yeah. it, was, it, yeah, right. it works out well for us. Um, yeah. And I mean, as far as the linebackers go, it looks like uh, Foyer has probably played himself into a pretty decent contract, I guess. Love it. Um, somewhere, whether it's with us, I don't know, but um you know, no, I, don't I, say that, John. Don't speak that into existence, man. I, I love that dude. I mean, yeah, I mean, he, you know, it, but he, he gonna cost us some money, maybe. I, I saw PFF. Yeah. It was, I think it was December, though. PFF uh, projected three year, 22 million range for there. And I don't know if that's still gonna be accurate or not based on the end of the season, but. Um, do, do you think he's worth that, David? I see David's face frowning up. Do you not think he's worth that? Are you saying, okay? I, uh, I think, you know, I look at the PFF grades and, and I, I think Foyer was better than what PFF graded him as. Um, so I disagree a little bit with what they, they said there. Uh, the thing is, um, I think you have to have a good linebacker in the middle in the DMPs. For sure. Okay. Uh, Foyer is athletic. Um, he, can, he can move sideline to sideline the way you want a linebacker to. Um, the problem is the thing that concerns me is Deion Jones has a massive contract. The only way to really get that contract off the books is to find someone that's willing to trade for him. Um, yeah. And uh, so you're, you're going to have to pick. I, I think the Falcons are going to have to pick between Deion Jones and Foye Um uh, oh. They're not going to, they're not going to keep both the, like I am 99% confident that both linebackers will not be back next year. Who um, do you pick Dave? I pick Foye. I do too. And I know John. I, oh yeah. I know John picked. No, and, and I, 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 I try to find someone to trade Dion to, and yeah. then I use that money and I, you know, I pay for you. So John, yeah, I, I want you to give him your spill on uh 45 and I want to just see if he can see it too. Well, no, I was just, uh, I was a huge Dion fan, uh, Jones. And, and I did. I mean, I, did, I think the Dolphins game, the Dolphins game, he was, uh, I think he won player defensive player of the week, had a great, good game. And that was one of the, that's like the only bright spot because I, I was seeing plays and, you know, since we started this podcast, I, we've been, I've been watching games back and just being a lot more detailed than I typically would be watching the game. And uh, I just started see, and I didn't want to see, it's like, you know, when you, you like, a, you like a player so much, you don't want to see the, what you're looking at on the screen. And I just kept seeing, and I hate, I don't like questioning players effort or something like that. I just don't feel like that's, fair really really because they're i mean it's a violent sport and everything but you would literally see plays that you know he just would check out on or, or blocks he would typically try Making to business decisions exactly no he did he did exactly and uh and i was just like damn is this really happening and then you know and mike was you know he was like no nah, i don't think I so i admit it you don't want to and then like after i, I didn't I, either yeah yeah and after so, after uh, so I'm, you saw it too david yes yeah um so uh, since 2015, I've rewatched every single Falcons game um, at least once. Oh, shit. Um, every single one. And let me, well, with the exception of one game, I've never rewatched that <laughs> same, one. Same um, here. Same neither, here, buddy. Neither have we. Neither have we. I, don't, I, want, either, I will not even watch we. highlights. I want that yeah, one. We will not rewatch that one. Never. Uh, so that, yeah. did you see a decline for no, 45? I, his, his abilities are as good as they ever were, like for his physical abilities. Yeah. Um, he is as fast as he's ever been. Um, I don't think there's been a decline physically, but I saw several plays where it just seemed like he had checked out. Yeah. And look, some of that, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt because I love Debo. Um, yeah. I, and I've, yeah. I've been defending him this year, uh, but I, I think I got about three quarters into the season and people were like, we got to trade him. We got to trade him. We got to get rid of him. We got to get rid of him. And I started thinking, you know what? He's, he stands out on the defense in a bad way. Right. Um, every, almost every week. Um, and yeah, I hate to say it because he's, we hate to you know, say there was a, there was a point in time where he was the one of the best coverage linebackers in the league. Yeah. yeah. Um, he regularly on um, several games shut down Alvin Kamara by himself. I, yeah. I was just about to say Alvin Kamara by himself. Yeah. And I, I want that Debo back. Yeah. You I want give me that dude, Debo. Yeah, absolutely. I want the dude that stood up Cam Newton at the goal line. Oh God, yes, concussed I mean, him. 
I mean, cuss. like, no, like, yeah. I mean, and, and Cam probably had 30 pounds on him. <laughs> you know, I mean, 30 or 40 pounds on him. You yeah. know, I mean, and yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, it sucks too, like you said, because of the contract. And I, I wondered partly, was it maybe he doesn't like necessarily, I mean, I know it's a new position for him. He's not the play, he's not a signal caller anymore. That could be part of it. And, and he, and this, and, and I saw so part of me wanted to say, okay, maybe he's getting used to this defense. Maybe he preferred Dan Quinn's version over what he's playing now with Pease. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I hope that would be the case. And then he comes back next year if we keep him and, you know, all of a sudden he's back to being the guy we, we saw for, you know, basically since we drafted him. Um, but like you said, I mean, it's, and every time Mike and I talk about, or anybody that comes on the show that we talk about the future, there are so many moving parts and so many variables. They're going to be done over the next three or four months. Yeah. I mean, that's going to, you know, decide what's going to, what direction they're going to go in. So I yeah. just don't want two in another uniform. I will cry like a <laughs> baby. Know. Just don't put me two both. in another uniform. I can't, I don't, I, I'm not emotionally ready for that. No. Hey, I told John, I, he's like a child. I've seen every game he ever played. I would cry a baby if he went somewhere else. Yeah. But I now, would want him part- to win the Super Bowl. I just want him to win one with Atlanta. Right. Yeah. And look, like if, if you told me um, we're going to trade him in like 2022, he's going to go win a Super Bowl um, with the oh, team that-, that we trade him to, I, I would be okay. Like mm-hmm. I would say that that's the only circumstance in which I, I could that's accept it. Because you're happy for him. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And look, you know, I, I had the immense opportunity of interviewing him this year. Oh, um, come on, man. Like, it was, uh, he's, he's just the, the, the coolest person. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you know what? Uh, I, I don't care. I'm, I'm going to wear my, yeah, I write about the team every day, you know, podcast you? about them. Uh, and, you know, it's essentially a job now. But uh, when it comes to Matt Ryan, I'm, I'm wearing that, uh, I'm wearing that fan hat the entire time. I can't I'm let it go. I am, I am not unbiased. I am completely biased. I know we brought it back to Matt Ryan. It's again. okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's all right. He's... Come on, man. Oh yeah. Wait, wait. Chris, hold up. It's Matty Ice, man. My, mine's on the wall. See, so. see, look, see. I love yeah. it, Matty yeah, Ice. Man. I love you, buddy. Hey, Matt. I love you, buddy. <laughs> My biggest <laughs> fan. I love it you. Ro- it always rolls back to him because it's it like always, this... hey, yo, we talk about Matt Ryan so much. I'm sure some people have cut us off at the point. No, I don't. Know. Whatever, because. <laughs> I, but I love because he, he he gets so much bullshit. I gotta come to his aid. When you look at his career, you look at his coordinators, you look, you look at his coaches, you look at his defenses, you look at his offensive lines, you look who, who his running backs was. I don't want to hear it, man. Matt Ryan is the truth. Yeah, and then to just do the all beat. that with shit with to turn shit into breakfast. I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> love Matt Ryan, bro. Yeah, man. I mean, the beating he's taken. I mean, I mean the and they just keep getting up and just like I said, I mean deflect every bit of uh, success to his teammates and then be the first one to say, oh, Hey, I got to be better when they lose. I mean, professional man. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. And like That's... my family, man, the dude is a class act. So yeah. um, I got to take, I so I got something too, Dave. I'm going to name some Falcons, man. I just want you to, cause, cause you got to see them all. I was a kid <laughs> and I, if you know anything or you remember a play, I just want you to, cause these are people I remember that mean the world to me. I grew up. You remember uh, Ray Buchanan? Oh yeah. <laughs> they play uh, Ray uh, Chuck Smith. Cool. Oh God, uh, fantastic Jesse Tuggle. That's for sure. Jesse Tuggle. T- Tuggle the Hammer is one of my all-time favorite Falcons. Tough, Pardon right? Me. Tough as hell. Right? He was. He was my first ever jersey that I had. Was a Jesse yeah. Tuggle jersey. Yeah. Um, I Valdosta to, like, State came from uh, from the south side of the state. Did he? Yep. Yeah, undrafted. Uh, undrafted free agent from Valdosta State. Yeah, that dude. Uh, I remember this dude we had. I know he was like a backup running back. I used to think he ran tough. You remember Jason Snelling? Oh man, the yeah. the the Snelling shuffle. Love him. The shuffle like, pass to Jason Snelling, man. Yeah, love him. Um, I used to like uh, man, so many Falcons. But you got to see. So um, the you know, you know, just, hey, you know, one guy we never talked, we didn't talk about growing up. One of my favorite, uh, Scott Case, man. I love watching that dude. Oh, Scott yes. Case, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Hold on, hold on. Fantastic David, defender. You, yeah. Do you remember Tim Dwight? Oh yes. Come Every on. time that guy caught a kickoff. It was you like someone what? shot him out of a cannon. Yes, <laughs> he, he, he was, was from, either gonna uh, he was either gonna score a touchdown or get knocked the hell out. That was yep. the only thing that would happen. 
he was from uh, Iowa, and I think he ran track. Wasn't he a track star? Yeah, yeah, yeah he yeah. was a man. No, you're right. He uh, was if he didn't go if he didn't score, he was going 100 miles into whoever hit him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it was, like yeah. he said, he was going out. Uh, Keith <laughs> yeah. Brooking. Yeah. Remember, oh uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, Keith Brooking. I'm a I'm a Georgia Tech guy, and yeah, uh, of course, yeah, a local local guy made made good. So I think he actually played high school football in Georgia. So Damn. he went from high school to to college to the pros. Um, yeah. So you gotta tell us about the dude. Um, I seen a lot of that jersey, and I don't know anything about that dude. Was the quarterback? You said Steve Bartow. Was he a beast? Yeah, um, Barkowski beast. was. He, he had a big arm, man. Um, the guy could throw it downfield. And he had, you know, Billy White Shoes Johnson, um, you know, when okay. he came in. And, um, yeah, the, like the first game I watched as a Falcon was when they uh, – as a Falcons fan was when they lost to the Cowboys in the 1981 uh, playoffs. Oh. And uh, they lost to uh, – Danny White was the quarterback. Danny White. Danny White. Yeah, Dallas. I do know who that is. Uh, and the only reason I know that is uh, – I grew up with a mother who was a hardcore and still is a hardcore Cowboys fan. Same here. Um, so Same here. yeah, really? <laughs> yeah. She's from Texas. She takes it serious. Roger Stallback is her dream guy. Roger yeah. Stallback. Oh is man. I heard so many stories from mother about Roger Stallback and oh, uh, she Drew Pearson. Uh, yeah. All of them. Uh, hey, you, and you should tell them about uh, when y'all bet on the games. Oh, when they the, play each uh, other. Man, so uh, my mom is a big Cowboy fan, and my father and my brother are Redskins fans. So, you know, we always <laughs> play each other. Man, all hell regular. When you think it shit hit the fan in the family, like, we get along until the Falcons <laughs> play the Redskins or the Cowboys. Because my mother talk trash, like, like, and my parents, like, they take it very, very and you know the Skins in, in, the, um, in uh, Dallas, a big rivalry. Mm -hmm. So when we played the Falcon, man, it's just all hell. But it's the most fun thing to have her come down here and see our stadium. And I've been to the Dallas Stadium. Have you? That stadium is ridiculous. I want to go. I want to go. Uh, but you got to be in the old Georgia Dome, right? The first yep. the Georgia Dome when it was the Georgia Dome. When, yeah. Oh, yeah. Probably yeah. Fulton County Stadium, right? Yeah, I watched many games in yeah. Fulton County. Yeah. Yeah. This is oh, yeah. before okay, pre-Georgia Dome, man. Georgia Dome was 92, yeah. I think. Yeah. 90, yeah. 91, 92. Yeah, and then yeah. wait a minute. They, they Where was the Fulton, Fulton Stadium? Where was the that Fulton was, Stadium? They shared they shared the stadium with the Braves yeah. for, for years. The yeah. Falcons? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So you would you would have the field where uh during baseball season you would have the diamond, the, the dirt of the diamond still cut into the football field for yeah. the Falcons. Oh man. Oh, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. You would that's you would crazy. see occasionally you would see guys that they're they were wearing shallow cleats and they would like slide on the dirt <laughs> Damn, yeah 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 now uh man were the falcon fans more loyal back then or do you see it now or do you think it was better then uh no it's never been good <laughs> now, see, i will damn. i will say he is honest i will say it's 91 was that was um, it a Jerry fun Glenville. as hell year Jerry Glanville, um, back in yeah. black, uh, MC, MC Hammer Hammers. being MC. in, uh, you know, too uh, legit. Van der Holyfield. Van der Holyfield showing up. Um, you know, you had all sorts of famous people showing up. Yeah. Uh, Deion Jones, uh, not Deion Jones, uh, Deion Sanders, Deion Sanders uh, really, you know, uh, getting that locker room pumped up. Uh, yeah, man, that was like that time. And then the, uh, the Michael Vick years were um, okay. phenomenal. Okay. Um, okay, and I was uh, I was also a massive Michael Vick. Oh man, fan. me too. Yeah. Um. And yeah, those were I think the peak of Falcons fandom uh, was yeah. ninety one Michael Vick years, and th and then I, I would say also you know um, the early Mike Smith years with the Falcons. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, were, that's true. Were really really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, you got to see every time we was good. Yeah, pretty much. Like, you got to admit, <laughs> yeah, yeah he much. seen every time we was good. He yeah. seen that's amazing. pre nineteen eighty. There was not much. It wasn't no. much, but that's dope that he's <laughs> seen. He's seen every. He saw Andre, Andre Rising, Jesse Tuggle. Like, he oh, seen man. every time we was ever good. Like, yeah, damn, that's Michael amazing. Haynes. Michael Haynes. Yeah. Look, damn. when people complain about Matt Ryan, I'm like, do you guys remember Jeff George? Seriously. Um. Yeah. yeah. Chris Chandler. He was oh, actually yeah, good Chris, for a little Crystal bit. Chandelier. Um, yeah, yeah. Chandelier. Hey, that's a good one. 
Well, yeah, that's Joey, what they hey, called him. That's what, what about, fans called him. What about after oh. what about after Vic, man? Joey Harrington. Joey, Har- Joey yeah. Harrington. Kurt um, Kittner. Byron Leftwich. <laughs> oh, that I, Chris Redman. Byron Leftwich. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's crazy. You think about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Bobby yeah, yeah. Abear. You want to yeah. talk about Bobby quarterback Abair. whose arm arm fell off? Bobby yeah. Abear could barely throw it 20 yards when he was with the Falcons. Damn. That's right. Um, yeah. Yeah. So you, you want to complain about quarterback play. I will yeah. tell you about some bad quarterback play. Yeah. Matt Ryan is not bad quarterback play. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. And to the, all those Falcons, some, some I grew up on that you won't know, all Falcon fans that are really, that are young, you know who was a Falcon, started off as an Atlanta Falcon? Mr. Brett Favre was a Falcon. <laughs> yeah. He was a part, and I heard he used to party when he was, he wasn't That's- about no business. That's he why was, he was not yeah, a Falcon anymore. Yeah. Exactly. That's what they said. They said Brett Favre was crazy when he came out of college. Yeah, he liked Buckhead a lot. Yeah, yeah he did. He did. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, he probably wouldn't be alive right now if he stayed. Uh, that's, as a Falcon. Yeah. that's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, yeah. I, and probably, I think with the younger fans, though, I think they, the ones at least that started wa- or becoming fans, if you want to call it that, during our run, Super Bowl years, or like they kind of got used to some of the success. So they, Mm-hmm. not expect it but they just you know they probably want it a little bit you know they get, they're greedy they want it you know they think we should be better every year when we're really not i mean or you know like it's just i don't know to me it just seems like the younger ones are the ones that are quicker to just fire him fire that guy you know yeah, get him yeah, off the yeah. team cut that guy those you know. damn whippersnappers yeah. <laughs> yeah and i didn't think i'd ever be that way I'm like well i'll be 40 in a few weeks and i'm like yeah here i'm a, I, my, my son said i have 11 year old the other day he said something I was like, what the hell does that even mean? You know, and it was, and, and you know, and, I, and I'm finding myself like every day now so finding stuff that I don't know what any of it means. And it's, yeah, I, maybe that's yeah, just, just you wait. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, <laughs> what seems to relate though, because looking, I told Matt or Mike that our, uh, our analytics seem we have the 35 to 50 year old, like we're nailing that. We're nailing that, <laughs> that, that age group really well. 18 and under. Nobody hate us. Yeah. <laughs> they're, 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 those old cats, man. They don't know what they're doing. But yeah, I uh, know. Well, hey, we'll, uh, I don't want to keep David too long, but uh, just ending up, man. I know. Well, I don't want to get too much into the draft because there's going to be plenty of time to talk about it. And there's like, mm-hmm. who knows what direction they're going to go? Because, like I said before, we could go <laughs> several different directions and be oh, an yeah. upgrade. So, um, but looking and in, going into the next season, man, I uh, I feel pretty stupidly optimistic i don't know if that's uh, a good way to put it but even i mean i just i just feel like i know they put out a video today and uh, people were bashing it online about the foundation being set but i i, I mean I, I i get it i see it you know i mean i, I don't know why mm-hmm. everybody can't really understand it but i mean i i, I think you said before uh, a few weeks or last week maybe was it 31 players under contract yeah you know, for next year so there's going to be a huge change regardless of what you know, I mean, whether you're the fans that want a complete overhaul, well, it kind of is almost because there's going to yeah. be so many new faces, you know, and maybe we bring some back on on one year deals that are that are cheap, like you said. Um, but I mean, I'm pretty optimistic. I mean, year two of DMPs, year two of these rookies that were pretty were coming along as the year progressed. I mean, yep. another off season with them. I mean, and we can only make an upgrade at receiver, right? I mean, we can't really go backwards there. <laughs> um, so. I mean, if we upgrade and we get a true one or at least, you know, and that pushes Russell down, you know, we compliment, maybe, you know, we get somebody to compliment hey, uh, Pitts, mm-hmm. you know, on the other side. I mean, I don't know. I just, I, like you said, I, I think we could be in the top half, you know, pro- fairly, mm-hmm. very easily with a, with a addition that, you know, fix up the line a little bit, you know, with a, with an addition there, maybe a veteran, you know, type of presence, but I feel pretty good about it. Mike, you? Um, um, so David, I don't know if you noticed or not, but we pick every game, uh, every preview game we pick <laughs> and every week without fail, no matter who we play, we could play God. And I'm going to say the Falcons are going to win, but I, I'm not going to be realistic. Every pick, hey, John, am I right? Every 100%. pick I said the Falcons. 100%. 100%. 100% I say the Falcons are win. So I can't, I will never say, I'll say we're going to win the Super Bowl next year. You know, no, we already, we left. <laughs> We talked about yeah. this. We didn't talk about it. We talked about the opponents on the last show. And yeah. uh, and Mike was like, oh, hey, I, I know it's super early, but what 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 kind of record do you see us having? I was like, dude, I can't even tell you because our team's going to look so different. Yeah. And but, yeah. so just, but just looking at the strength of what those teams currently are, I think we might be in for a kind of season again. 
Um, <clears throat> but but you know, you never know. It's the NFL. But you think? but but no, hang on, hang on. But then you were like, well, I'm I'm thinking we're gonna go undefeated. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so I'm like, no. Blind love, baby. Blind love out of my <laughs> falcon mind. Yeah. <laughs> David, much. so you think we make a huge jump or you think we just slightly improve? Um, I, I think it's gonna be one and look like the other. Uh, yeah. so I, I think they're going to make a, a big jump, but they have a harder schedule next year. Yeah. Okay. I think you could see a situation where the Falcons are a much better team in 2020, but they still only win six or seven games. Um, that is a great plan. And I didn't even think about that. So oh, it'll yeah. look like a setback, but they will be building and doing what we want them to do. I didn't uh, even think about that. That's I actually, I think the, I think they have real potential if, as long as they do a good job in the draft and free agency this upcoming year, where I think 2023, they could be a legitimate surprise team that makes a run in, in the postseason. Um, I still think 2022 that they, they're going to make some noise. Um, but I don't know, like, I, I think the big problem for me is I don't think you can fix both the offense and the defense in one off season. Yeah. Uh, so I think, you know, they could go into this year, into 2022 with a much better offense, but still have a defense that is improving, but still, you know, like number 20. So not, not good, but mm -hmm. better than they were. Um, and that's probably going to get you the, to six to eight wins. And right. so it's going to look like it's going to be, people are going to be like, ah, oh, they haven't improved. And, and actually they, they may improve substantially, uh, be a much better team, but the record may not reflect it. And I think yeah. that's where you get into 2023. If everything pans out, um, they can surprise people because, you know, the 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 box score analysts are going to say, ah, oh, that's a seven win team last year, and all of a sudden they're going to pop off 11, 12 wins. People are like, where the hell did this come from? Yeah, right. You you weren't paying attention. That's yeah. that's where yeah. it came from. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's and, great. That's great. And, and one one thing we didn't mention, but uh, we were seven and two at one score games this year, and that yeah. was a huge that's change huge. from the Dan Quinn era of mm -hmm. could not close a game out to save our lives. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean that just said a lot considering the team we have now and even and i know the teams we beat were not like you know groundbreakers or anything like that i mean they 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 were mediocre to yeah, teams at best but <clears throat> it's the nfl i mean we, and we you know we, you play who's in front of you right so i mean and we won those games so that's can be said um and look the, <clears throat> when it comes to that comparison the the one thing because i had people tell me ah oh, you know look at what dan quid da did last year and, and look at what arthur smith did this year and um, the difference is Arthur Smith was a first time head coach. Dan Quinn was not. Dan know. Quinn was in his fifth year as a head coach. Um, unless you think Arthur Smith is a village idiot, he is probably going to use this off season to look at what he did, figure out what he, what didn't work, um, what he did poorly, and he's going to get better at it. Um, and that, like you said, uh, seven and two in, in single score games, um, go back to 2015. Yeah. Remember, remember that 2015 team with Dan Quinn, the signs were there early on that Dan Quinn could not stop the bleeding mm -hmm. because that team started five and oh, yeah. and then they finished their last 11 games, three and eight. Yep. Uh, and they could not, they just started hemorrhaging losses one after the other. Um, so you look at the, just the beginning of these two coaches careers. And I, I would argue that Arthur Smith had a worse roster. Um, you know, overall, and did a better job as a rookie head coach than Dan Quinn did. I so. agree with you. Without a doubt, yeah. And uh, and one thing, one thing I liked, um, I heard. I think it was Chris Mordenson. It was early in, the, really, really early in the season. <clears throat> this interview he did uh, with Six Eighty here in Atlanta, and uh, they asked him about the hire, and he said one thing about Arthur Smith that he loved um, is Arthur Smith had said to him uh, or in an interview that um, one thing is he always would keep an open mind. And he, yeah. he, he would take ideas, not just from coaches, but it be, could be a player. It could be, and he would never just, this is my, this is it. I'm not going to veer from this. Like it was always, where can I, you know, if I can get more information, the better, because then I can make a better decision. And you don't see a ton of coaches like that. You see a lot of coaches that just kind of have a, their idea of how to do things and that's how they're going to do it. So I think that combined with just his, you don't, there, he, he's, he's definitely not a, uh, 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 
a t-shirt guy. Like he's, he's not a slogan guy. <laughs> you know, he's not going to have that um, any anytime soon. I, I'm totally fine with that. I'm fine with the Nick Saban, Belichick, oh. uh, boring ass conferences. I, that's great. The, the uh, dry sense of yep. humor. Cool. Perfect. You know, I mean, like just bring it on the field I'm and with you. the players. I'm good, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but, um, and, and last thing, uh, David, on the, on the, the, what Mike and I talked about too, the, uh, the attendance, I know it's a lot of it's based on the performance of obviously the team on the field. And do you think with, cause I mean, right when the, the PSLs came out, like I listen when we listened to, I listened to sports talk radio uh, quite a bit and so many fans called in and like, I can't afford mm-hmm. to go anymore. You yeah. know, like it's almost like they priced out like some of their most devout fans, you know, and like the, the corporate hold so many of the seats that they're not going to be in the, you know it's just i don't know it just seems like it's uh, what do you think as far as that goes yeah i think it was a misstep yeah. um I, I i love arthur blank i think he's a great owner but i think that was a big misstep that and uh i think there are other other ways for them to raise money and to um you know still allow fans to be a big part of what was going on in the stadium right. uh i hope that they see what's happening with the poor attendance and you know winning will fix some of that it's not going to fix all of it Mm -hmm. um right and i hope that you know they take that into consideration uh and try to attract real fans back Mm -hmm. to the stadium Um, yeah because there have been too many uh games over the past couple years where it sounds like the falcons are on the road like they're yeah they're in Mercedes Benz and the opposing fans are so much louder. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I just don't want to see that anymore. So Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, in some ways, maybe these, uh, these several losing seasons will, will be a lesson. uh, And I I hope it's heard because fans deserve to be able to see their team live Mm -hmm. and to root for their team um, without getting gouged, uh, you know, from the ticket prices. Yeah. I mean, a buddy of mine, uh, you know, he has a, he has two kids and he had season tickets prior to, you know, the Mercedes Benz and everything. And I think for him to renew the PSLs, I mean, he would have to have like sold a kidney or something to just even <laughs> to, to just afford that before even getting yeah. into anything else. And, you know, and I remember he was so pissed because they came out and was like, well, you know, to me, <clears throat> a dollar Cokes and $2 hot dogs. He's like, I can't afford to get the damn stadium to buy the $2 hot dogs. I can't even afford the seats, much less get in there to buy the food, the cheap food, Mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, I I agree. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise having these rough seasons that, you know, that just kind of shows them like, man, we got to get like, because back before, I mean, at least the lower bowl was rocking, you know I mean? With with the fans that were, you know I mean? I mean, it's like, that's now it's not even, yeah. The last game we could have, we could all think we could have filled up the lower bowl by putting everybody down there that was there. So, yeah. But we also have to do better the fans that come to the stadium. I've been in the stadium several times where um, it's so much stuff to do within the stadium. Oh, yeah. That's part of it. Yeah. People check out the game. The game will be on and people will be like, who cares? I'm about to get drunk in the yeah. uh, in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. They get yeah. drunk and they go find girls and they play arcade games and, and, and you can throw hand talk, you know, the sandbag talk. You can do too much in the actual stadium. Yeah, I think that you got to shut some of that stuff down while the game is on. Sometimes, some may, maybe think about it because there's too much going on. For if we losing, people check out. I'm going out in the hallway. Yeah. It's yeah. more of a party out in the hallway. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, hey, David, we do. Uh, Mike started this thing a few weeks okay. ago. We do. We do underrated, overrated. We do everywhere. underrated, <laughs> overrated, David. So here's what we're and, gonna and, do. I'm. I, I'm gonna start it off, and then we're gonna go to John. We can go to you. What you do is you pick anything in your life, anything you want to talk about. It got to be underrated or overrated. If it's underrated, you give it props. If it's overrated, you trash it. <laughs> I'm going to go. So that's just where we go. So I'm going to kick this off with, and you can pick either one. I'm going to go, uh, I don't know if y'all had, this is for everybody listening. Uh, what is it? What is it? Okay, McVinty Blonde Roast. Okay, it's not the same as the Pike Place. It's not. This is liquid crack. You go to Starbucks or, and they stop. So, you know, it's liquid crack. They don't even serve it after like 10 or 11. They won't. You can't get it. Go early in the morning. As for Venti Blonde Roast, it's not Pike Place. It's different. Something is in it. I'm, I feel like I'm on Coke. <laughs> I'm probably not going. To, and I had it at 6 a.m. I mean, this stuff is amazing. I put hazelnut in it, a little pumpkin spice. Pumpkin spice is almost out. You got to go now. But it was awesome. But I am jacked. 
Venti, <laughs> Venti Blanc Rose from Starbucks. Trust me, ladies and gentlemen, underrated. Go ahead, John. <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> yeah, mine's not near as entertaining. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, my overrated, I guess, and just because it's coming up soon. Okay. Is uh, watching the combine live on TV. Definitely great. One. Um, I, I, I get like the. Uh, I mean, to me, right, if right. I was an evaluator, I'm looking at game film more than I am at like the underwear Olympics, basically what's going on, you know, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, but the, I mean, I'm sure like the interview process to me is more important than like, you know, throwing a 20 yard out to with no defender, you know, right. like, yeah. you, you can see arm strength in games, you can see it, whatever, but like the, the, the interview and the player, seeing what he's about, seeing what his, you know, mental capacity is to me that's probably okay. the most important part of the combine but like okay i can't i mean watching guys that's a good point john good. yeah that, and i used to one. i used to when i was younger I, when they first started televising it you know i'd get it and then like rich eyes started running the 40 and i'm like when is this what, what is happening <laughs> you know and um and then watching you know big guys just push the thing around I'm like nah I just yeah. i can't do this anymore so yeah <laughs> yeah that's a good so, one yeah, all david, right it's on you david anything you can go under or um, over yeah so I saw after UGA won the championship, some people talking about, uh, or after they beat Michigan, pardon me, um, some Georgia fans saying, you know, that Hutchison guy, he didn't even get close to our quarterback the entire game. Um, and uh, people saying he should drop in the draft. Falcons should pass on him if he drops all the way to eight. Oh, God, no. Um, oh. what, is, what is so overrated is judging a player by one game. That's is, awesome. That's awesome. We had so many Falcons fans uh, who last year were weeping and gnashing their teeth because AJ Terrell had a bad yep. championship game. Yeah, right. and That's they right. judge That's they point. judged that one player by that one game, and they were they didn't want him because of that one game. Um, and now we are beginning to see people do the same thing with Hutchinson. If he's there at eight, the Falcons had damn well better draft him. Dude, mm. over overrated uh judging Judge. judging guys by one game man that's, i had to be our three best ones i think that was awesome that was pretty uh, awesome yeah 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 <laughs> as, uh, well so listen y'all gotta go bug david so we can get him back on the show <laughs> at some point in the future. blow his inbox up at him just get him back on the show you gotta beg him no yeah david dude we, we really appreciate you coming on man we really we love got, it man we yeah, yeah, man you enjoyed awesome, it somebody we gotta get yeah you. we had a blast it um yeah so guys we're gonna close the show here um if you want to get in touch with us like i said just follow us on uh twitter you can reach out to us you can email us um, like i said we've had several emails over the season that we read out uh on on uh, on the podcast all of them were good we didn't have any like you guys suck or you know do something else they were all positive so that's great um <laughs> yeah it was good um so yeah and uh as far as the itunes and spotify you guys you know you, you can all rate uh the podcast now so if you give us a five-star review it just helps us uh move up the list and make us more visible to falcons fans out there that can find us um we're going to keep going in the off season they're like we said at the beginning of the show uh there's no uh, lack of things to talk about around this team so as far as a draft free agency um we're going to have some other guests on we're going to have uh, we've got a if you live outside of the state of georgia or atlanta and you're a falcons fan we kind of want to know yes. how the hell that happened like yes. why you chose to be tortured and drink heavily every sunday we want to know mm. yep. what, what what spurred that decision so we're going to have a guest on next week that's from pennsylvania um that uh somehow ended up a falcons fan so we're going to figure out why and how and, and have a little chat with him um but uh yeah so that's that's pretty much how to get in touch with us and kind of what we have going on and uh like i said david we'd love to have you back in the future man talk about god knows what around the team and matt ryan <laughs> we need to have and, a whole matt, matt ryan of course of course of course, matt ryan. Of course. Yeah. yeah yeah so anyway guys we'll, we're out we will catch you guys next week thanks so much for listening you can catch us again on spotify itunes you can watch us on youtube if you choose to um and uh on anchor.fm of course as always so we appreciate you guys and we will catch you all next week mike john is out of his mind john is out of his falcon mind david is out of his falcon mind i'm out of my falcon mind peace all right we out